Hello friends, this is Aman. Welcome to UK Dreamers. Today's video would be about the ACCA's training pathways. Many of you had a confusion saying uh, we talked about ACCA's emergency medicine, we talked about ACCA's anesthetics, someone has also seen ACCA's internal medicine. So what is this ACCA's? How do you get into the various you know subgroups of the ACCA's and what's the eligibility criteria entry criteria uh, this is what we would be discussing in this video so watch till the end guys so uh, before I start uh, I do not represent the NHS the deaneries the Royal Colleges or the ACCA's curriculum uh, this video is just to give you a brief overview about the various uh, you know specialty training that you can do when you enroll for the ACCA's pathway. So let's talk a little bit about ACCS. So the ACCS stands for the Acute Care Common STEM. So it is a broad based training that will equip you with more diversified knowledge of dealing with acutely unwell patients. So the first two years of your rotation, you would be rotating in emergency medicine uh, internal medicine is basically your acute internal medicine which will be posted in the acute medical units or the medical assessment units uh, then you would be posted in the anesthetics department and this you know you would be more of a super neurary character in the placement so what you would do is get your basic competencies of putting tubes putting lines how to work in you know uh, how to give regional anesthesia or you know ultrasound anesthesia and then the final one is getting your intensive care medicine which would definitely you know give you exposure of the intensive care and as i said various competencies of the procedures and everything however if you talk accs broadly would give you specialty in three different specialties first one emergency medicine second anesthetics and the third internal medicine or you may say uh, it's more of uh, you know acute internal medicine pathway so let's talk uh, i've already made videos about emergency medicine and anesthetics which i'll post the links as we progress in the video but yes internal medicine is what we've not talked uh, so we'll talk a little more about that so if we talk about accs emergency medicine it is a specialty training program it is a run-through training program means if you enter at st1 you would exit as st6 and eventually become a consultant so the intake is just once a year that happens when the applications open next time like in uh, november uh, so you can go ahead with the applications in november you would give the msra exam okay uh, before that so what's the eligibility criteria for you to enter the specialty training either you've done your foundation year competencies if you've done your foundation years here in the uk or uh, you've got a crest form basically so uh, i've made a video about crest form earlier please have a look in the channel so if you have any of these you're eligible to enter into specialty training how is the selection process like so the selection process is that you will have you would uh, do your application and everything you would be invited to write the msra exam the msra exam once the results get published there's a cutoff score once you have scored beyond the cutoff score you would be invited for an interview and then the interview would be done and based on that you would be selected so the tricky part about acc is emergency medicine is if you can see on the screen this is the competition ratio which was for last year which i've got from the hge's website basically so the application posts are just 361 applications were 1424 you can see the competition ratio being 3.95 close to 4 which is highly competitive it's more competitive than anesthetics almost as competitive as surgery emergency medicine is the field of demand i would say so accs emergency medicine uh, this is the link above uh, which i made uh, a year ago with one of my fellow colleagues 
So the structure of the training basically if we talk, so as I said, it's a specialty training. So the ST1 and ST2, all you would be posted in four different departments for six, six months, which would be emergency medicine, anesthetics, internal medicine, that's the acute internal medicine and the intensive care. So after you finish your two years, you would progress into ST3 emergency medicine and yes, you would be a registrar then. Then you would get your various rotations. I think uh, ST3 you get uh, to do pediatric emergency medicine and adult emergency medicine that year. And then you would gradually progress up to ST6, you know, depending on your yearly outcomes, which you call as the ARCP and also the examination and also, you know, the portfolio. So it's just not the exam or you doing your bits. It's a compilation of all the tick boxes. Once you've done everything, then you progress. So this was ACCS emergency medicine. Now let's talk about ACCS anesthetics. I had recently made a video with my friend Claire. So the link is above if you want to have a look. So ACCS anesthetics is not a specialty training program. It's a core training program. So the difference between specialty and core in simple specialty run through you enter once you exit once core training you enter into the specialty you get with you know what what can i say is get midway and then reapply for higher specialty training so uh, accs anesthetics would be three years the core training basically uh, the core uh, the intake would again be in the round one which happens in november eligibility criteria again is the foundation year competencies or your crest form Selection process is the same. You give the MSRA, uh, you get a cutoff of the MSRA. Once you have the minimum cutoff, they would invite you to the interviews. Once you've done your interviews, then you get a placement. Competition ratio, as you can see, is 3.61. It's still highly competitive, but the post you may see relatively a little more as we saw in comparison to the emergency medicine posts. So when we talk about the training years, basically, so uh, you would be rotated in the four departments for six, six months. That's emergency medicine, anesthetics, intensive care and acute internal medicine. So you finish two years, you complete CT1, CT2 and then you get into CT3, basically. So this would be for another two years that you're exclusively posted in anesthetics after you've completed your four years of basic you know, ACCS, then you can apply for ST4 anesthesia. Uh, I'm just going to talk about anesthetics here because there are different things that you can do, but let's stick to that. So as I said, ACCS anesthetics, you know the drill, four years as a core uh, trainee, and then you progress into higher specialty training. Let's talk about ACCS internal medicine. Uh, uh, these posts, you know, are, are very, very less. However, they, they are, uh, what to say, pub public, uh, you know, uh, when the posts are advertised, you would not see just ACCS internal medicine. It, it has IMT and ACCS internal medicine all together. So it is again a core training program. You enter CT1, you finish CT3 uh, or IMT3 and the total span is still of four years uh, intake is once a year through your round one applications which happen in november eligibility criteria is still the same that you have to have foundation your competencies and crest form selection process no msra so accs internal medicine would not need you to write the msra so for that you need to uh, fill a self description form uh, score yourself, you know, and then you'd be shortlisted, uh, longlisted, shortlisted, ask for an interview. If you're selected in the interview, then you go ahead. So if you see the competition ratio, this this competition ratio, if you see, it's not only for ACCS internal medicine, it's overall for the internal medicine. So uh, you can see the competition ratio is still over two. So still competitive. All these specialties now in the UK are competitive, guys. So, you know, you have to work hard on them. If we talk about the distribution of the training, basically, so as I said, all six months of four different specialties, emergency medicine, anesthetics, ITU and acute internal medicine. Then uh, once you finish these years, 
you start as a IMT two two years of medical training then so you start as IMT two IMT three and then I am depending on that if you want to go for group two specialties you can do that after IMT two however if you want to go for group one specialties you will have to complete your IMT three and then step up as ST four. I've made a video of a brief overview, you know, about the group two specialties, group one specialties. You can go through the channel and that would give you an overview. So why ACCS if we talk about this? So it's a good training program. It's a broad based training which gives you a good overview of, you know, in emergency medicine, anesthetics, ITU, you know, in a nutshell. Uh, so in one single umbrella you cover all the acute specialties and there's good possibility for you to go into further high specialties in internal care medicine if you want so that's it for today if you want the adrenaline rush go for ACCS so for all further details you can go and see the website of the ACCS or it's a very decent website will give you a broad overview of what you should expect and what what's going to come in your training and uh, if you haven't subscribed to the channel please go ahead you can find me on facebook linkedin and uh, everywhere <laughs> all right guys thank you so much for watching see you in the next video take care bye bye